Hello students, welcome back to my English class for 11th grade. I am glad to see you again. Before lesson, we talked about buildings and its materials. Now, today we are going to talk about bridges and design. Okay, do you know this bridge? Where is it? Okay, this bridge's name is the Golden Gate Bridge. It's located in San Francisco. Now let's see lesson objectives. Today we are going to learn to understand with limited support the main idea in extended talks on bridges and their design. Next interact with peers to ask and answer about bridges. And understand specific information in texts on bridges. Okay, now let's listen to the text and match the types of bridges to their pictures. Bridges are a natural part of our everyday life. They are used to cross a variety of obstacles such as a river, a sea, a valley, a road, or a railway line. There are many different designs that each serves a particular purpose and applies to different situations. Their design and construction vary depending on their function. For example, by their use they can be pedestrian bridges, train bridges or car and truck bridges or wooden, concrete, steel, or stone by the material they are made of. The most common types of them the beam, the arch and the suspension bridges. The main difference between these types of bridges is the distances between one vertical support to another. Some bridges can cross an obstacle in a single span, while others need many. They also differ from each other by the type of material to be used and by the overall look. The beam bridge is basically a horizontal structure that rests on two supports, one at each end. The weight of the beam pushes straight down on the piers. The further apart the piers, the weaker the beam becomes. They're usually made of concrete or steel. Beam bridges rarely span more than 60 meters. The arch bridges use arch as a main structural component. An arch bridge doesn't need any additional supports or cables. There are many arch bridges built by the Romans 2,000 years ago, which are still standing today, real proof of the natural effectiveness of an arch as a bridge structure. Modern arch bridges can span up to 300 meters. The most elegant and beautiful of all bridges is the suspension bridge. Modern suspension bridges usually have two tall towers joined by cables. The bridges hang from these cables. This means that the towers support the majority of the bridge's weight. These bridges can have the longest spans, up to 2,000 meters. Now let's check answers. Okay, let's go on. Now let's see explanations of these bridges. Arch bridges use an arch as a main structural component. The arch is always located below the bridge, never above it. Beam bridges are basic type of bridges that are supported by several beams of various shapes and sizes. Bridges that use ropes or cables from the vertical suspender to hold the weight of bridge in traffic are called suspension bridges. Okay. Now let's practice reading. You will open your book, page number 63, exercise 15a. The Golden Gate Bridge connects the city of San Francisco and San Francisco Peninsula. It spans the Golden Gate, a strait between the Pacific Ocean and the San Francisco Bay. That's where the name Golden Gate Bridge comes from. Construction of the bridge began in 1933 and was completed in 1937. The project was designed by architects Joseph Strauss Irving Morrow and Charles Alton Ellis. The bridge rises 230 meters above the water. With its total length of 1,970 meters it was the longest suspension bridge in the world until 1964. The bridge is part of the United States Highway 101, has six lanes and a footpath on each side. Okay, now let's answer the questions. First question, what's the name of the bridge? Answer, the Golden Gate Bridge. Number two, where is it located? Answer is, it's located in San Francisco. Number three, what's the purpose of the bridge? Answer is, it connects the city of San Francisco and San Francisco Peninsula. Next question. Number four, when was its construction started? Answer is, 
It is started in 1933. Last question. Who was it designed by? Answer is, it was designed by architects Joseph Strauss, Irving Morrow, and Charles Alton Ellis. I hope you have understood the main points in text about the Golden Gate Bridge. Now let's go on. At first you will look at this sentence. Now let's read it. It was designed by architects Joseph Strauss, Irving Morrow and Charles Alton Ellis. Okay? By architects is written in the sentence. So let's learn by agent. Okay, now let's uh, learn how to use by agent in the sentences. We use by agent to say who or what did the action. For example, this house was built by my grandfather. Next, we don't use by agent when the agent is unknown, unimportant, abused from the text, or referred to by words such as someone, people, and I. For example, all flights were cancelled because of fog. Okay, you will copy this use of English on your notebooks. I hope you have understood how to use by agent in this sentence. Now let's watch a video. In the active voice, the subject of the sentence does the action. For example, John painted the house last week. John is the subject, painted is the verb, and the house is the object. In the passive voice, the subject of the sentence receives the action. For example, the house was painted last week. The house is the subject, and was painted is the verb. Notice that the object in the active sentence becomes the subject in the passive sentence. The passive voice is used when we do not know who did the action. For example, the documents were stolen. We don't know who stole the documents. The passive voice is also used when the receiver of the action is more important than the doer. For example, the pyramids were built nearly 5,000 years ago by the ancient Egyptians. We want to keep the focus on the pyramids. To change the active voice into the passive voice, Make the object of the active sentence into the subject of the passive sentence. Use the verb to be in the same tense as the main verb of the active sentence. And use the past participle of the main verb of the active sentence. Let's look at some examples. Active. People drink champagne on New Year's Eve. Passive. Champagne is drunk on New Year's Eve. Active. Chefs use these machines to mix the ingredients. Passive. These machines are used to mix the ingredients. Active. They renovated the restaurant in 2004. Passive. The restaurant was renovated in 2004. Active. The teachers informed the students that the class had been canceled. Passive. The students were informed that the class had been cancelled. To form the passive voice in the present tense, use is or are plus the past participle. We often use the present tense passive for processes. For example, first the apples are picked, then they are cleaned, and finally they are packed and shipped to the market. We also use the present tense passive voice for general thoughts, opinions, and beliefs. 
For example, New York is considered the most diverse city in the U.S. It is believed that Amelia Earhart's plane crashed into the Pacific Ocean. Hungarian is seen as one of the world's most difficult languages to learn. Skin cancers are thought to be caused by excessive exposure to the sun. To form the passive voice in the past tense, use was or were plus the past participle. We often use the passive voice in the past tense for events in history. For example, George Washington was elected president in 1788. As well as crimes and accidents. For example, two people were killed in a drive-by shooting on Friday night. Ten children were injured when part of the school roof collapsed. As well as in many other situations when the person who did the action is unknown or unimportant. Now let's practice. You will change the sentences from the active into the passive. You can omit the agent where it can be omitted. Now let's check answers. 1. Ms. Jenna invited me to dinner. I was invented to dinner by Ms. Jenna. 2. Thomas Edison invented the phonograph. Phonograph was invented by Thomas Edison. 3. Someone stole my car yesterday. My car was stolen yesterday. 4. They heard her shouting. She was heard shouting. 5. Shakespeare wrote Hamlet. Hamlet was written by Shakespeare. Okay. Now let's practice reading. Today most people prefer to live in multi-story departments and thus elevators have become critical in residential buildings as they many a times extend to 15 to 20 floors. Elevators make vertical travel easy and save on time and effort and they are fast and safe too. Hype on elevators are the best lift suppliers in Delhi NCR and provide safe and comfortable elevators. These are the reasons why elevators are important in residential spaces. Multi-storied residential spaces. Today is the age of multi-storied buildings and apartments and thus elevators have become a must today as it is not practical to take stairs to go to higher floors beyond the second or third floors and with elevators you can reach any floor in a matter of seconds. Speed. Climbing stairs is tiresome and a slow process and thus elevators provide a faster and quicker way of vertical transport. Hype on elevators provide fast and safe elevators and are the best elevator suppliers in Delhi NCR. In this fast-paced world everyone is trying to save on time and thus elevators save time and efforts and are thus worth the buck. Comfort and convenience. Elevators provide comfort and convenience. You don't have to exert and climb upstairs, instead you can be lifted up to your apartment in a matter of seconds. Elevators today are safe and comfortable, they are air-conditioned and have all the safety features thus making them a pleasant experience. Safety. Elevators are much safer than stairs as one can slip off the stairs and there is no such danger with elevators as they are safe and secure. Buffer are installed and all the modern safety equipment including emergency communication are installed and thus elevators today are safe and convenient. Practicality. Elevators are also very practical as many times you have to life your travel and shopping bags with you and that can be done using elevators without any effort. You don't need to carry heavy load on your back instead the elevators helps you carry all the load and makes vertical travel simple, easy and convenient. Thus today's elevators are fast, secure, quick and comfortable and are definitely the future of vertical transport. We have just talked about the bridge and the design. Now let's talk about elevators. Do you agree elevators are important part of modern life? Okay, elevators. You will write some advantages and disadvantages of elevators on your notebooks. Now I will show you some examples. Some advantages of elevators, they are useful for high buildings. Next, a safer comparing car. Next, save time and fast and easy. 
Now you will look at some disadvantages of elevators. Elevators are small, more dangerous than step. Next, promote laziness. Next, gain weight and have a heart attack. Okay, you will write some sentences using advantages and disadvantages of elevators on your notebooks. Okay, what have you learned today? We have learned today some new words related to bridge and design. Next, how to use by agent in the sentence. Now you will check yourself using this rubric. At first you will read it carefully. Okay, now I will give you homework. You will do some exercises such as 21A and 21B. Today's lesson has finished. You will do your homework. I hope you have understood today's lesson. See you next time. Goodbye.